Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on differential equations. This is video number 40 of video 5 in the subsection on the wave functions of the hydrogen atom. Specifically, I'm going to discuss the electron, electron orbitals. There are a lot of videos previous to this which are relevant and I've listed them there from 20 through to 39. The most important of which is video 38 where I discuss the hydrogen atom and I introduce quantum numbers, the electron orbitals and so on. So this particular video really is a carbon copy of that section of video number 38. So perhaps it might be nothing new to you. And in video number 39 I discussed quantum numbers. So the purpose of solving um, the radial equation or the Schrodinger equation is as follows. We are trying to calculate the wave function for electrons for hydrogen. So we had the spherical coordinates, that means the wave function was a function of the radius the polar angle and the azimuthal angle. And we found that we got a certain set of quantum numbers. And each of those quantum numbers corresponds to an allowed state or an allowed um, state for an electron to be in. And that's what we're going to discuss now. So electrons exist on, in a state and we call those states orbitals. So they are the spherical harmonics which basically are uh, when we multiply the polar and the azimuthal functions together. We call that spherical harmonics. And if you like, you want to see the pictures of spherical harmonics, you, look, you can look at my video 35 where I discuss the polar angle equation. So I'm not going to be drawing them now, but I want to discuss how we define which orbitals the electrons live on. Note that the orbital angular momentum quantum number L and the magnetic quantum number M they're both limited by the principal quantum number n. So let's just start looking at the allowed values of n, l and m sub l. So first of all we have n. n let's say I have the first four values of n because it's non-zero. So it's n is equal to 1, 2, 3 and 4 say. Now depending on the value of n we call that a shell. So when n is equal to 1 we talk about a k shell. If n is equal to 2, we talk about an L shell, and an M shell if it's n is equal to 3, and so on. Because this is the, it's I suppose, the, the first grouping of electrons is in a shell. And then once you start talking about L values, you talk about subshells or orbitals. So, once you have the shell, so you're after deciding what value for n you have, you need to look at the allowed values of L. So if we look at n is equal to 1, because L is equal to n minus 1, there is only one value for L. In this case, it is equal to 0. Now, as an aside, a very important aside, we name the orbitals as follows. If the L value is 0, we call it an S orbital or an S subshell. If it's equal to 1, we call it a P orbital or P subshell. If L is equal to 2, we talk about a D orbital or a D subshell. And if it's equal to 3, we call it an f orbital or an f subshell. And to be honest, for most cases, that's as far as you need to go. So in the case where we have n is equal to 1, so we talk about a k shell. Now l can only be equal to 0, and we said 0 was an s orbital. So we have an s orbital. And I, I, as I'll explain in a moment, this only can accommodate two electrons. So let's say we go for an L is equal or N is equal to 2 and we get a capital L shell. Now, because the orbital angular momentum quantum number small L is equal to N minus 1, that means we can have, in this case, either L is equal to 0 or L is equal to plus or minus 1. So if L is equal to 0, we have the S subshell. And if L is equal to plus or minus 1, we have the P subshell. So you would talk of the n is equal to 2, we uh, should say the 2s shell or the 2p shell, for example. And as I'll explain in a moment, the p shell can accommodate 6 electrons. Now I'm going to discuss the n is equal to 3 or m shell in detail. So we say n is equal to 3 here and we talk about the m shell. So this allows 5 values of small l, the orbital quantum uh, orbital, orbital angular momentum quantum number, specifically 0, plus or minus 1, or plus or minus 2. So when it's equal to 0, we talk about the S subshell. 
When it's plus or minus 1, we talk about the P subshell. And when it's plus or minus 2, we talk about the D subshell. So, so far we have the, let's say, we have the, uh, you might have the 3S, the 3P, or the 3D um, states. 3S, 3P, or 3D states. Now, specifically I said that S holds 2 electrons, P holds 6, and D holds 10. Later on we'll see that the F subshell also holds 18. Now where does this come from? So let's look at the S subshell. So it's an S subshell meaning L is equal to 0. But we know that M sub S is equal to, it goes from minus L the whole way up to plus L. So if L is equal to 0 then M sub L is also equal to 0. So there is essentially only, there is only one value. But what's important here is that for electrons, there are, two, there are two electrons for each m sub l state because electrons have two spin states, plus a half and minus a half. So you can actually fit two electrons into each m sub l state. So here we only have one m sub l state, namely zero, accommodating two electrons. So if you look back up here, the s, the s orbital holds two electrons. Now let's look at the p orbital or the p subshell. So the l value is plus or minus 1. So we have l is equal to plus or minus 1. This means we have three possible values for the magnetic quantum number m sub l. Namely 0, plus 1 or minus 1. So we have three, three m sub l states. You need to multiply by 2 to account for the spin giving us 6 electrons which is exactly what I've written up here. Now to look at the d subshell where L is equal to plus or minus 2. So that means we have two L states. But in this case, M sub L can go from minus 2 to plus 2 in integer steps, giving us five, uh, five M sub L states, or five magnetic states. So five magnetic states multiplying by 2 to account for the spin gives us 10 electrons, exactly what I have here. So we can see that S holds 2 electrons, P holds 6, D holds 10, and for the same reason we can say F holds 18 and so on, and it keeps getting bigger. Now to start looking at the periodic table. So the periodic table was a start, to start to be put together by, um, I think it's Dmitry Mendeleev, I think that's his name, I think it's the first name anyway. So he basically started looking at the periodic table by looking at the orbitals, and that's how we look at it to this day. So let's look at it. We first of all have to start with n is equal to n is equal to 1. So here is the n is equal to 1. And how we how we write it is we write, we write down the, the the value of n first. In this case n is equal to 1. We know that the n is equal to 1 uh, shell can only hold one subshell, namely the the subshell with l is equal to 0 or the s subshell. So we write down so it's n is equal to 1 L is equal to 0, so it's a 1s. Now we also know that it can hold 2 electrons. So if, it, if, the, if the subshell is only filled by 1 electron, it's a 1s1 orbital, which is helium. Excuse me, not helium, it's hydrogen. Now, if we fill the 1s shell with 2 electrons, we now talk about helium. So we've now filled the 1s, uh, the 1s shell, or the subshell, excuse me, or 1s, um, the, the 1s orbital, and we've also filled the n is equal to 1 shell. So now we must increase n. So we, we go, we have our 1s, 2. So if 1s, n is equal to 1, we have s shell, it's filled with 2 electrons. So if I add another electron, I must add it to the n is equal to 2s um, orbital, and we let's say we put in 1 electron, we talk about lithium. If we put in 2 electrons, we talk about beryllium. And now the, that S shell is filled because we can only put two electrons into it. So you have 1s2, 2s2, that's complete. If we want to add another electron, it has to go into the next one, which is a 2p state. And as we said, there are six possible electrons in the 2p state. So we have, two, we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. And as we add an electron in, in each of the p states, we of course get new elements. We get boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. So if we look at neon element number 10 on the periodic table, we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So it is 
completely uh, its outer shell is completely full um, whereas fluorine for example is not full it, it needs one electron or boron is not full it needs to in this case it's easiest to lose one electron so the next one of course would be an F subshell so you might have 1s2 2s2 2p6 and then we, we would have uh, we have to go to n is equal to 3 so if you go to n is equal to 3 we would have we would have a 3s we have 3p 3d and 3f and this allows us to get even bigger elements on the periodic table so that's all i've got to say about that i hope that was um i hope that was informative so thanks for watching please pass it on to your friends subscribe to my channel and you might also give me a comment in the comment box below